Mark Ewan. They were pretty friendly, particularly, um, well, I guess from kind of late 98, 99, through the gong years. So we did the Gorilla, and then he was in the gong tour um, 99. I started when Didier said he didn't want to do the tour. And I think I was uh, jamming, you know, hanging out at Mark's place in Tulse Hill. And um, Chanel was there, and Keith Bailey came for a play. And Keith Bailey was um, booking the gong gigs at that time, was the agent. And so, for whatever reason, they said, I think they asked me if I wanted to do some gigs. I think that's how it happened. Because obviously, Keith had seen me, Mark knew me, and Chanel had been there. And Chanel wasn't in the band, but. Maybe it was, it was probably more the Keith connection. Yeah, I think Mark and Keith and Jamal had sort of a machine. Yes, that's right, that's that, that's right. I remember those recordings. Very long, but yeah. I've got some of those recordings at home. So through that, you know, the gong connection happened and then it, I guess it went well and they said, well, why don't you carry on? Um, which I did. And uh, it was kind of fine with Didier. And whenever Didier was around or wanted to play or they wanted to do a play, we either did two saxophones or there were a couple of gigs I didn't do that he did. Memorably, Glastonbury in 2000, I think it was, or 2001. I think it was the one David Bowie was on the main stage and gone on the other stage. No, I didn't do that one. Infinity as collective credits, but I understand your input was particularly strong on the, on the music. <laughs> uh, wh wh how did the genesis of the music happen? Uh, was that playing together in a rehearsal studio in London with the guys and stuff? Uh, did you bring ideas uh, that were like almost complete songs already? A combination of those things. Yeah. So it was David Allen was quite generous in terms of um, artistic input. So when it was, it was kind of established that there's going to be a new studio album and we'll sort it out and do that. Um, the music that were to be recorded, it was kind of open. Who, who has, who's got ideas? Bring some stuff, let's try it out. And there was a combination of um, jamming and a rehearsal studio. I think it was largely Moat, the Moat in Stockwell, which was a very nice uh, studio back then, 99. Um, so jamming and ideas and, um, and bringing ideas that were already either formed or semi-formed. So I, I brought some, I, I brought quite a few ideas that were, I thought might work with the band. And also I think a couple of the jams I then took away and worked on sort of in my home studio. And then there was one yeah, well, I kind of brought some ideas, but um, there was one called Body Lingus, but it was very much David's lyrics. And I like the idea, because I'm not really a lyricist, so I like the idea of doing something with, um, in fact, with, with David's lyrics. So Body Lingus was a particularly memorable one. And there was the Only on Mars, which was Jilly's thing. Um, I wanted to have something that kind of used her Space Whisper sound. So, I guess we're talking 99, so I'd already done a few albums myself, so 2AM, V From The Edge, Secret Island. Um, so I, I kind of, I've always enjoyed the creative process of albums, putting albums together in, in studios and making it work. So when this came about, I, I, I did bring a lot of stuff. I had a, you know, just a keyboard with some various sounds and samples and ideas and suggestions. And so I, 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 yeah, I brought a lot to the table. But, you know, it's fair enough in a kind of, you know, uh, cooperative band that people um, put their suggestions in and, you know, writing. It's very interesting actually how, diff how bands share out the writing because I've, I've experienced all sorts. One, sometimes you get someone who brings maybe a, a basic melody 
and um, some lyrics, and everyone th- puts their thing in, but the songwriter keeps everything. Sometimes people bring whatever they bring, and everything's shared equally. And in a way, I find both of those are not really fair. Because if someone just brings in a melody and the lyrics, but the sound of the song is because this drummer plays in this way, mm-hmm. and this bass player's got this really unique sound, and that makes the sound, and they get no writing credit, that doesn't seem fair. But if someone, say, brings everything, they bring the song, they bring the lyrics, they bring the tune, they bring the arrangements, they bring the ideas, um, and then it's shared equally while someone else has, I don't know, been down the pub or on the golf course, that's not fair on the person that's done all the writing. Um, and I personally thought the gong approach was very equitable. So, so, so whenever a track was like credited to four people, was it like four equal parts or were there... Not necessarily, no. Uh, so it's like 10% for one, 30%? It could be. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't say that on the cover, but it could be. Yes. And there would be people that would contribute, maybe in a minor way, but an important way. And therefore it's um, important that they, one, that they're credited for their input, and two, there's financial implications, because if you get a writing credit, you, 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 you get the publishing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I thought David and Gong, you know, Mike Howard and everyone, it was all very reasonable. So if people had input things in, uh, or suggested things, um, time was spent going, well, I think, you know, you deserve this and that, and I think you deserve this and that. And so I think everyone was quite happy with that. In fact, I remember David Allen saying there'd been cases which had either gone one way or the other, either it'd been equal split but he'd done everything or I mean, he hadn't been crazy but you know, he'd done a lot of work so... Um, There's so other songs as well where he's credited solely and Pip and... Uh, yeah and sometimes... Would say that, uh, right, this and that, yeah. exactly. So you get these arguments, you also get, to be honest, and I heard of these, you get things where even the band agrees but then the Performing Rights Society or the, you know, the organisations that write everything down and are the administrators, they get it wrong. Mm-hmm. And I think that had happened in some common places yeah. where the band had agreed what it was, but for some reason it had all been credited wrongly. Yeah. Um, anyway, I did. I, I brought quite a bit to the table. Um, you know, I was very happy what everyone did. It was a very enjoyable process, recording the Zero to Infinity album. And I think we were all pretty happy with it. And we, we toured a lot with it, you know, mm-hmm. between when it came so out. two years or... Yeah. yeah, till the end of 2001. Mm-hmm. And we did a lot of the songs from the album. Um, a lot of the gigs, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that live album came out as well, Live 2. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was good. Mm-hmm. David is a, a one-off. It was a one-off. And I did uh, yeah. it too. Jumping forward in time a bit, you did your second album with Gong, but I, I imagine that 2032 was a different situation where you weren't quite as involved. It was a really village dominated uh, album in terms of yeah. preparing the music and stuff. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Steve Village was definitely the producer, and um, I'm not even sure about the writing side. Um, I, I was, yeah, I was basically. I came in with my saxophones and recorded on some of the songs, but I wasn't involved in the writing. 